at the outset, I thank the GCTC for giving me the opportunity to be part of this edition of GCTC's National Conference on India's Defense Architecture, Road to Atmanevar Bharat. GCTC, in a short time, has established itself and has been playing a proactive role as an advocate, catalyst, and facilitator for discussions on issues of national interest. As we celebrate the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahatsa to commemorate <coughs> of independence, it calls for reflecting on the past, reading the present, and planning for a secure and prosperous tomorrow. The Navy in the last 75 years has witnessed a journey sprinkled with achievements, learnings, course corrections, evolution, mostly transformation, and most definitely full of excitement and opportunity. A journey from a 33 ships Navy to a 130 plus ship Navy, from a coastal groundwater Navy to today's blue water Navy with a footprint, a footprint spanning the entire globe, from a bias navy to a builder's navy, which you are all aware that we have recently commissioned an indigenously designed and, a built, designed and built aircraft carrier, from medium range guns to supersonic missiles, and from binoculars to space enabled domain awareness. So essentially, this journey of evolution to a balanced, multi-dimensional, multi-spectrum force that protects, preserves, and promotes national interests wherever they may lie and whenever required. While much ground has been covered thus far, however, a long road lies still ahead in charting a course into the future. Visionary guidance has been enunciated by our national leadership. Be it the Honorable Prime Minister's articulation of Panch Pran or the single-minded focus on Atmanirbhar Bharat or transformational initiatives such as Digital India, Skill India, etc. The aspirational national direction is absolutely clear. Self-reliance and defense equipment cannot be compromised as we transit the Amrit Kal towards India at 100 or Shatayu Bharat. The nation has set itself a clear goal for India in 2047, that of being a developed nation. And therefore, the Navy in 2047 must be fully Atmanirbhar, force that is combat ready, credible, cohesive, and future proof in service of the nation. Amare Pranya, Amare Manya, Pradhan Mantri, Jine Atra July, Ko NIIO Seminar, Solomon Me, Egdam Nishchit Mark Darshan Diya. कि हमारा लक्ष्य यह होना चाहिए कि भारत जब आजादी के 100 वर्ष का पर्व बनाए उस समय हमारी नौसेना एक अभूतपूर्व नौसेना हो और अभूतपूर्व ऊंचाई पर हो। We have an unequivocal commitment to it and we are confident that we will achieve it. This confidence draws from the numerous achievements of the past, which were a result of collective teamwork. Be it shipbuilding, development of niche systems, such as electronic warfare suits and sonars, weapons, sensors, machinery systems, our endeavors have yielded fruitful outcomes with nearly 3,000 systems and subsystems being indigenized. The commissioning of our first indigenous aircraft carrier, Vikrant, 
earlier this month has been the most recent and one of the most notable achievements for our nation as a whole. It was an outcome of years of hard work and perseverance by a team encompassing the government, the Navy, the Cochin Shipyard, Indian Defense Industry, MSMEs, innovators, and the workforce working together for a common purpose and aptly showcasing that the whole is always greater than some of its part. With that as the guiding principle, the broad course we wish to undertake is encapsulated by one word, sprint. On one hand, it signals the pace with which we wish to progress. And on the other, it tells the industry the method by which we wish to progress. Sprint, just to remind, stands for supporting and pole vaulting in R&D through IDEX, NIIO, and TDAC. The aim is to seamlessly mold the elements of innovation, indigenization, and self-reliance and create a sustained defense ecosystem. This necessitates focused attention at the highest level of government, requisite funding of research and development, involvement of private sector with attractive fiscal provisions, provision for exports, simplification of processes, compression of timelines, and the synergizing of all stakeholders towards achievement of the same. A closer scrutiny of each component of Sprint will indicate to you our overall thought and also our expectations from the industry. Starting with the word supporting, it stands for how we view our relation with the defense industry, not merely that of a transactional buyer-seller relation, but rather that of a proactive partners working alongside and assisting each other. Moving on to the second component, pole vaulting. By this, I mean that we have to generate new ideas, follow aspirational trajectories in pursuing these ideas so that we pole vault rather than leapfrog or trudge along these curves that we ourselves create. Coming to the third component, that is R&D, research and development. The Navy considers indigenous research and development as a game changer that could revolutionize our Indian defense industry. The industry needs to have and maintain long-term outlook and not look for short-term gains and returns. The industry needs to crystal gaze 10 to 15 years hence then walk the long path through homegrown R&D. This has indeed been achieved earlier by countries that boast of indigenous defense capability. Obviously, we also need to support the efforts of the industry. This would translate into availability of niche products for the Navy. The fact that a warship is like a township at sea, which brings in technology that is required essentially in a smart city. Therefore, naval shipbuilding offers immense opportunity for development of dual use technologies for both military and civilian agencies. A large number of military solutions can be adapted to commercial and civilian uses. Such dual use avenues include hull equipment like walls, davids, winches, cranes, air conditioning, RO plants, refrigeration, robotics, unmanned systems, autonomous solutions, composites, communication and networking, sewage treatment plant, 
garbage disposal, cabling, optical fiber, firefighting, and damage control, etc. We aim to collectively produce these products that are made in India, made for India, and made for the world. Something that has far reaching strategic consequences. The defense industry needs to focus on two areas. One is in the intellectual domain, which will create an ecosystem and encourage original design and development. And th thereafter, the industry would need to create a sustainable production base, which executes projects on time and within approved costs. To ensure reliable and dependable, dependable performance through the life cycle of the equipment, adequate quality control is another essential element that must become the cornerstone for our defense industry. Since naval platforms are system of systems, therefore, we would expect the defense industry to acquire credible capability to integrate such large canvas of equipment, weapons, sensors, and auxiliaries. As regards IDEX, TDF, and MAKE processes, these encapsulate the much required handholding element for our growing defense industry, especially for our vibrant MSMEs who have a crucial role to play. And finally, the NIIO and TDAC, the Naval Indigenization and Innovation Organization and Technology Development Acceleration Cell are our front ends through which the Navy interacts with all stakeholders and in the defense industry to convey our specific requirements and expectations from the field. The Indian Navy signed an MOU for knowledge partnership with academia and industry partners, that is SIDM and Bharat Shakti in March this year. And the MOU is already showing results as can be judged from the overwhelming responses received from various Indian Navy student technical education program, knowledge partners, and other technical colleges across the nation during our sprint challenges. While sprint encapsulates our thinking, statistics reflect our actions. Let me touch upon a few. With Vikran, 76% was plowed back into the Indian shipbuilding ecosystem, encompassing over 90 OEMs, over 100 MSMEs, and 500 ancillaries, 2,000 direct and 13,000 indirect employment. In addition, <laughs> items have been sourced from 18 states and union territories, signifying the whole of nation effort. Going ahead, the 43 out of 45 warships that are under construction in India and existing 55 acceptance of necessities for ships and submarines that will all be built in India would continue to propel the domestic industry's growth. In terms of technology, the Honorable Prime Minister had launched 75 technology challenges to the industry during the Swalamban seminar on 18 July this year. You will be happy to know that over 1100 proposals were received MSMEs and individual innovators. Of these, more than 160 proposals have already been selected in a short time, which involves over a hundred startups and innovators. The process is ongoing and some more proposals will be shortlisted over the coming weeks. We are planning to conclude contracts for these in the shortest possible time and are definitely sprinting. To sum up, Maniya Rakshinara Mantri Ji ne Solamban Seminar mein ya ghoshit kiya tha. Aaj naya Bharat, naya Sankal ke saath, naya Lakshyo ki aur bad raha hai. Nai nai pehle aur nutan prayas kar raha hai. 
guided by this optimism and inspiration, the Indian Navy has a clear vision, enabling policies, supporting structures, and a proud track record towards achieving self-reliance in defense. We can achieve this with a collective and collaborative whole of nation effort. This is where the enduring partnerships with industries and innovators come in. All we need to do is to sprint to make Navy a force that represents in letterance and in spirit a strong and developed India in 2047. And let me assure all of you, we can and we will. With that, I conclude and I thank GCTC once again for this opportunity. Jai Hind. Uh, on behalf of uh, GCTC, uh, I wish to uh, thank you for a very succinct uh, and uh, inspiring uh, talk uh, on how the Navy has grown and what the road, road ahead is. And indeed, uh, the vision of Sprint uh, is, is a vision which assures us uh, of the Navy's unstinted support uh, in, its, uh, in the country's uh, march towards uh, self-reliance in Atam Nirbhar Bharat. Uh, thank you very much. It was a wonderful talk and uh, we all uh, applaud you and uh, let's bring our hands in. Thank you.